stretch. Uh, spring break is behind us. We are a little over now halfway through the spring semester and uh, uh, the days are going to get warmer. It may get a little hot under the collar for you if you've fallen behind on your homework assignments, but uh, everything's pointing toward the end of the semester and uh, we are into our last several uh, chapel presentations. I am glad you're here today. Uh, certainly you can tell by the setup of the stage that it's going to be something out of the norm. And we think it'll be something very memorable for you. So uh, thank you for being here this morning. If you came in, hopefully you didn't shun the lovely young lady at the back who's trying to hand you a bulletin that's there for your perusal and for your benefit. There are announcements in there that need to be made, some things that, uh, reminders about things that go on on a regular basis, like uh, Gather 78 and the Vine. Uh, but there are also some special things in there. Notice that this is St. Baldrick's Week. And uh, two uh, uh, events related to St. Baldrick's Week on Wednesday, today, uh, there's a cornhole tournament, and uh, each team will need to pay $5, which will be uh, donated to St. Baldrick's. You see that money goes to uh, uh, raise money for pediatric cancer research, and so uh, uh, even if you're not good at cornhole, it'll be worth the investment, and you can have fun while you're losing and, uh, and support that cancer research. That would be a really cool thing for you to do. This Saturday from uh, 10 to 1 is our uh, annual St. Baldrick's Day uh, event and so that's going to take place over in the sack there'll be things going on over there uh, and I don't know all of that in my head but if you've ever been to St. Baldrick's they got things to do they'll have an auction they'll have games they'll have uh, opportunities for you to gain some information about uh, St. Baldrick's what it's all about and if you, even on the spur of the moment you would like to go over there and have them shave your head or even you know just from the neck up or whatever get it all eyebrows you can do the whole thing look like a bowling ball that'll be fine but uh that is this Saturday, and many of you have uh, heard of that before, participated in, in other places. So that is this Saturday on, on our campus. And then uh, on Saturday also, uh, beginning at 1, going from 1 to 3, uh, Saturday is Serve Day. And so uh, uh, Joe Nucitelli is the coordinator for that. If you have information or you want some more information, uh, look up Joe and, and ask her about uh, some details. But there are going to be different things to do. 
Uh, we're going to meet in the lobby of the chapel right back there so you can go for St. Baldrick's. Uh, spend some time there. Come over here from 1 to 3. Uh, we'll organize at 1 and then go out and, and do some service uh, on Saturday. So Saturday's a, a big, big day. Know some other things there that are not normally on the calendar. Uh, Pi Day, uh, Thursday, March 14th. That would be tomorrow. And uh, you can see some of the things going on there. It's going to happen right in Carter Hall, right there. Take advantage of that in the QEP movie, Quality Enhancement Plan, that stands for. And so uh, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of opportunities to go and do some things. Uh, also, on the cal calendar on the right, you'll see athletic events as well as other things just listed in calendar form. But one thing, uh, a couple of details on Sunday. Uh, there's a group, wants to, is, has anybody heard of John Christ? Christian comedian, you raise your hand and a smile on your face, kind of like that. Uh, John Chris is hilarious. He puts videos out, you know, funny little videos. Uh, but a uh, Christian comedian, and uh, there's a group going to go see him this Sunday. I think the show is actually in Evansville. But for fifteen dollars, you can have your transportation and your and your uh, ticket to get in to see the show. Everything else is out of your pocket. But uh, hope to take a group over there and just have a great time. If you need some more information on that. Uh, or want to get on a list, make sure that you get on the van or vans. Uh, then contact Trent Creason. He's got the information for that and, and coordinating and organizing that. And so uh, all these things are a uh, part of what's happening at Campbellsville. So get a bulletin, take advantage of the information it shares with you, and, uh, and uh, then participate in the life at Campbellsville University. Uh, there are no other announcements that need to be made. We're glad you're here again, and I'll be introducing the speaker in just a moment or two. But right now, we're going uh, to pray. So if you would, pray with me. Father, thank you so much for this day. And thank you for the break we had last week, whatever we did, whether it was sitting around at home eating Cheetos or whether it's serving in prisons in Florida, being uh, on the athletic fields or, or playing basketball, doing the very best they can uh, to represent themselves and the school and our Lord. Wherever we've been the last week, dear Father, we are thankful that we've been brought back here uh, to spend this time to walk this pathway together at Campbellsville University. And so we pray your presence in this place that you'll be glorified by what goes on here, dear God. But we also pray for uh, the name of Jesus Christ to be uh, lifted up during this chapel program this morning. We ask it all in his name. Amen.
This is new doxology. You've seen that in your program, but I'm just going to okay. introduce everybody. To okay. You. Yeah. Okay. So I'll let everyone introduce yourself. Just just say your name, where you're from, and your major here in Campbell's Hill. My name is Logan Hall. I am from Powell County, and I am a mass communications major. My name is Connie Goff, and I'm from Honduras, and I'm a graduate student. My name is Allie Monfalcon. I am from Louisville, Kentucky, and I am an associate in Christian studies. Hello, my name is Luke Gover. I'm from Somerset, Kentucky, and I'm a business administration major with a marketing emphasis. Okay, uh, my name is Sal Jameda. I'm the uh, instructor uh, in the music department, and I direct this group, uh, New Doxology. We have, uh, we are all booked for this year. We still have one date in April. If you want us to go to your church, please contact me. We'll gladly go uh, visit you and worship with you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks again, New Doxology. Uh, we are very pleased this morning to have Cora Coward Renfro with us. She is a graduate from Taylor County High School, uh, graduated from there in 1966, and then graduated from Campbellsville College in 1969 with a bachelor's degree with an art area in education and with an undergrad and master's of arts rank, master of art rank one from Western Kentucky University in 1976 and 1979, respectively. She has taught art for over a combined 30 years at Taylor County and Russell County High Schools and at Campbellsville University. Renfro, who specializes in Christian art paintings, gives presentations and art exhibits for churches and women's organizations. Her presentations discuss how she paints and how the Bible and God's messages, uh, and God's messages to her art. Let me just get my tongue back in place and say this as it is actually written. Her presentations discuss how she paints and how the Bible and God's messages to her influence her art. And you can see some examples. Uh, she brought some incredible examples of her artwork. She's a member of the Patrons of the Visual Arts, a group who supports art at Campbellsville University. And she also has artwork for sale at the Channing, Channing Art Shop on the, the campus over there by the, the cabins. She's married to James Renfro. They have two children, Jamie Renfro and Dwight Renfro, both graduates of Campbellsville University. Her parents are Charles and Audrey Coward of Campbellsville. And so let's welcome uh, as we graciously listen to what she has to share with us, Mrs. Cora Renfro. <laughs> well, it was Joan's idea, Joan McKinney, so I'm going to give her all the credit, to show what I do when I pour a painting. Um, that is something that's going to be interesting since so many of you are so far away. So I'm just kind of do a hit and miss job here. Okay. A few years ago, before I retired, I actually felt like the Lord was really asking me to devote my time more with doing Christian artwork. And I have always done different types of Christian artwork all through my career as teaching, but not so much as I started. I started doing some realistic paintings of the life of Christ, but then I found myself when I was trying to do some sketching, things like that, that I um, actually um, had problems doing oil paintings of some of the ideas that I had. So I just kind of put them aside. Um, so let me show you something I do. I just take a piece of, plain old piece of watercolor paper. Now I don't have anything in mind. I have anything in mind. 
I just take this and I wet it. And I call it pouring because that actually is what I do. I wet it. I hope I'm not spraying everybody. I take and decide whether I'm going to uh, use, I'm losing some of my debris here. So I get it all wet. And I think about what colors I want to use. And a lot, you can see a lot of colors. I use some three colors. I may use two colors, whatever. And in watercolor, whatever colors you put in, they fuse together. They kind of take and make more than one, more than the two colors. They'll end up being several colors then. Well, I just take and I take it on the paper. I try to keep some kind of path of light within it. So I take and I swish it around. I don't know this would be running here. I decide, well, maybe I might decide to use a piece of a uh, coffee filter. Get it kind of dry. Let's put this on there and see what happens. I like coffee filters sometimes because it makes circles. I take maybe some gauze. Uh -huh. Spray it maybe just a little bit. Put it down there. I stretch it across, make it go from one end to the other maybe. Open it up. Stretch it, let's see what it goes. Maybe have to add a little bit more of the blue in it. We'll have paint here everywhere. Okay. I'm going to take my other color, decide to pour it a little bit somewhere. Now, this is a kind of a yellow color, so I want to be sure to. Well, I'm losing my papers. Okay. Put that around different places. Now, remember, I have nothing in mind. I don't. Bean. I may take a piece of wadded up tissue, I take some rice paper, tear it, and usually the rice paper, if I put it on, then I leave it there. I let that be part of my darkness here. And put it down, maybe spray a little bit more, whatever. Okay, so I'm trying to do this all in about five minutes if I can. Let's put a little more gauze on this one. I need some direction here put in here. Maybe a little bit more at the top. Okay, I have no idea what this is going to look like now when we're finished here. Okay. Now, this is a concept that I went to a workshop and she gave different things and she wasn't using it as a tool to do any type of Christian artwork at all. It was just a tool to do abstracts. And I thought it was kind of interesting. When I started looking into the picture, I had, poured three, I had poured three pictures, just like I'm doing right here. Now, when this dries, let's see, where'd they go? Here. When this dries, I have something like this. Now, this I put saran wrap on. And I take this off. I'll start taking off. Here's the gauze. I'll start taking it off. Taking off. So what is left, I'll take some more galls off later, but what I have left is a picture like this one, or a picture, if you'll put this one up on the screen, they might see it a little better, the poured one. Can you see it up here? Can't see it? Okay, it's just this. It's just an abstract. Now, I take time to look at that abstract. I haven't seen anything in this one yet. I've had it poured about a week. I've turned it. I've turned it, <laughs> I've turned it, every direction I can think of. Well, now, there are some pictures that I don't see for even a year. And one of my favorites at home is ones that I, it really took me a year. Even my dog had to get a hold of the piece of paper and tore a big rip, a big hole out of it before I actually saw what was in the picture. Maybe someday you'll see that one. But anyway, this is what I start with, nothing in mind. So I sit around and look at the picture. Now you think that that seems like a little bit of waste of time, but to me it's been the most, uh, most exciting thing that I've ever done in art. I've painted, I've sculpted, I've done everything I think of stained glass, I have done, tried a little bit of all sorts of artwork. I love to do it all. I've, I've loved to do it ever since I was a little child, a little girl. And I'd, I'd, I remember in school doing it. And, and that was everything that I like to do, I use that as part of how I got through classes with enjoyment. 
Uh, don't forget, if you're teachers, be sure when you study and you're doing teaching, be sure you use art so that you end up having something to give those students that don't like to sit and read all the time. That's kind of like me. Didn't like to really sit and read. I'd much rather have a pencil in hand and draw and whatever, and try all different things. Being more creative in a different way. We're all, the Lord's made us all different. Oh, because completely different. When I'm looking at these pictures, I started doing one. I had like three, pic three different papers, but one of them stood out as a face, and in that face, there was, th there was a face, and there were some arms, and it made a circle, and there was a lamb, and it was this one. And if you'll put that up on the screen, maybe we can see. We had this. If you'll darken it a little bit so I can put less light on it. See? Now, this is what it looks like when it was finished. There is that shepherd. When I had tried to draw a sketch before, you know, I told you I was trying to do something oil, and I was taking the 23rd Psalm, and I, was, uh, I thought, well, I'll try to draw it, and I drew it. I put men in, the, in, in a pasture uh, laying down. I put uh, uh, some men standing beside the still water, and I did a few other things. But when I did the circle, I had used that as a pen idea. I thought that was a good idea. But in, when I looked at this pouring, I saw the face and I saw the lamb and the hand. Well, that got me excited because I thought, well, maybe this is the 23rd Psalm. Now, I hadn't really done this before, so I wasn't sure what was happening. Well, I was going to start drawing some other things of my own, but before I did, I happened to see, and I took a pencil and sketched this, and I did a little bit of change, put a little bit of darkness in around different places so I could see what was there. But then the next thing, before I could put a pencil to it, again, I saw this white area of this person reaching to the sky. Well, I went and started reading the 23rd Psalm. Now, if you look in the, if you, if you've read, I know you have the 23rd Psalm and you've looked at it, you've read it, you've memorized it. Well, I've read it over so many times that now I've, I have problems getting it all straight from one time to the other. But the very first thing that David wrote is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't want for everything. He was saying, he is my shepherd, he is my all, he takes care of me. How good does that feel when you're reading the 23rd Psalm? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. But now he restores my soul is the next thing I saw. Oh, can you imagine? What do you imagine when you're saved and, and how that, that feeling feels when the, when the Lord has just taken hold of you? How do you feel when you pray and you get up there and you're excited about what you do and you're worshiping like you're hearing these songs? I wanted to get up and clap and hold my hands up. But I thought I might look silly, so I didn't. But just think how you feel. Oh, he restores your soul. He gets down in you. Remember, Jesus said, I will not leave you alone. I'm going to give you someone, a comforter that's going to be with you. Oh, the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's exciting to me. Now, I kept looking, and when I looked at the, the water beside the still water, and the only thing that I could find is one little spot right here that actually was just kind of clear blue, and it had a little bit of salt residue in it where that I sprinkled salt on the picture, and it had almost like a sparkle of still water. You know, if you looked at still water and how sparkly it looks sometimes, the sun's shining on it. But now he also said he would, he would be with us with, in the green pastures. Well, when I was doing this, I saw this, but then I saw where the blue and the yellow had come together, making green with the pastures, and all these white spots, which are kind of yellowy looking. My picture was men. But they didn't look like men, and of course, so I looked and, you know, the we, Bible calls us sheep. I wonder why. But anyway, the sheep, I put the sheep in there. I saw sheep that were here. Well, going on and reading the, the Psalms, you see where it says, He restoreth my soul, and he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Well, there's a lot of area here which is was taken up here and here, and I started looking for a path, and I was just going to draw one. Of course, Cora had to get herself in there and just do her own thing, she thought, but anyway, I didn't do so. I looked a little more, and this is going over like 
a month or something this is taking place, I saw where salt had been sprinkled right here in this area and noticed that it began to look like pa little pavements, little rocks. I put pencil around them and started noticing that it was a path. But at the end of it, the salt had created a cross shape. The path of righteousness for his name's sake? Boy, that was really exciting. You know, this is getting more exciting all the time. The more I see and the more I do, oh, you know, this is something I've never experienced with art before. I'm not doing it. God is. He's taking a hold of it and getting me and able to see. I did pray to see. And boy, what an excitement that is. Here we have, I saw one thing here later. I saw this little white shape. And the little white shape is a man sitting with his hand up as if he has bread in his hand. And he has his little foot up, and there's the other foot. And I took and darkened around him. And in doing so, I noticed there was a blue area that looked like a table. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my, of my enemies. Well, I didn't think about it. I looked and I didn't see any enemies and I wasn't going to put anything in there with swords and shields and ugly old men, so I didn't do it. So I said, well, let's forget that part. So I went on and I put the, the cup runneth over. Later I saw in the picture where he anoints my head with oil. So I saw these things in the picture, but not the old, ugly old men. So I skipped that. So I went on and I started thinking about the rot. Uh, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, I kept looking and I saw a man, a shape of a man, and, well, that looks like I did not see the valley. It's there now, but I didn't see it. I thought, what scares me? And I started thinking about walking through the woods. And so I went and put trees up there, me drawing them, and with pencil and what my son said well mom it says the valley of the shadow of death well in ra erasing this what did i see but where saran wrap had been causing the hills and the valleys and then a path to going down through it the lord protects me even though i'm going through times of darkness and we all do he protects me his rod and his staff protects me. Well, I kept looking and different things, and one day I was sitting, oh, about like we are here with um, um, Dr. Paby, and I was looking, and I was across, I was on the couch, and I was looking, and all at once, I saw men standing behind the table. Tears came to my eyes. I had not expected, and all the other things I've seen, I dismissed the enemies being there because it just took part of that verse out. But what did I see but the enemies? Very faintly. And I put a little orange around them so that you could see them. They have no, they have no faces. They have no swords and shields. But you know, that's the way our enemies are. They're hidden away sometimes that we can't see them. Well, the verses and the things I thought about this, it was so wonderful to think what all he was doing. Here I go, and I, I finally get to the very last thing, and it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, how in the world do you draw goodness and mercy? Well, that one stumped me for quite a while. And I looked, and I thought, well, I'm just going to write it. I'll just write goodness and mercy across there. But before I did, what did I see but an area here above the cross, a foot in the yellow part, and a, his robe kind of flipped up, his hand into this yellow part. I hadn't done this. I hadn't separated the blue from the yellow. But here was a hand coming into the yellow part. Goodness and mercy is Christ. His goodness and mercy, what, he has, what God gave to us is the goodness and mercy of him in Christ Jesus. Here he's inviting us into his home. This is our home forever. This is eternal home. His goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, life here on the earth. But then I will have eternal glory. I took about it and I started 
since this was a circle, I added circles here to make this so that this is home in glory. I added circles around the cup, and I started going on, and I found a shepherd standing here with the sheep that I hadn't seen before. I saw a man coming up the path that I hadn't seen before. So each circle represented different things of different verses. But then when one, I came over here and adding a circle, and I started seeing faces, and I think maybe this is the most important part. There are faces of all different colors showing here in this picture. To me, this psalm and the Bible, it's for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, what you look like, what color you are. David wrote this to God, to praising God. But when you start reading this, and you read it over and over as I did doing this picture, it becomes so much something within you to know that this is life itself. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. And for his name's sake, and yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff that comforts me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thy anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, that's life. Now you see why I'm excited? Well, I started doing some more. Well, this one over here, I did as a pouring and, and, and introduced it to a church just as I showed you the, the orange one. And when I got it home and set it on the easel, this one was easy to find. There was a huge lion's head. Well, now that one wasn't too hard to think where I'm going to find in the Bible a lion. Well, I started, of course, the first thing you think of is uh, Daniel in the lion's den. So I started looking, and I did find Daniel praying, and I found other lions. And I went through this whole thing I found. I started to cut it off because I couldn't find anything else at the top of the picture. But because of this nice little design right in here it was creating, I hated to cut it because it was such a beautiful design. So then I started looking, and I started taking the book of Daniel and reading through the book of Daniel. This is a story of the book of Daniel, and it takes it up to here where they're in the fiery furnace. Here we have a, a statue that's standing. We have the ram and the, the goat. We have um, the beast. Here we have the kings falling away. It goes on and on, but then I find all through this reading, I'm finding something that's coming into me more than anything else, is that Daniel prayed. Daniel prayed. Daniel prayed three times a day. He, he prayed this and did this on a daily basis. This wasn't something that he just did every once in a while. He prayed. He prayed asking for help if somebody asked him a question about what a dream meant or what a vision meant or anything else. But Daniel saw visions. Daniel was close to God. God loved Daniel very deeply. That kind of tells me something. If I'm, I want to love God, and I want him to love me back, but I have to have communication. And our communication is with God. We can talk to him just like I'm talking right now. You don't have to be a professor. You don't have to, uh, of uh, theology. You don't have to be a college graduate. Anybody, but anybody can pray. You may feel intimidated by praying, but it's what's in your heart that counts because that's the one's listening to is God. But Daniel, with all this that I went through, and the middle of the picture had nothing, but what the vision came to me, the very last thing is Daniel praying. Now, he talks about a lot of other things in Daniel. Please read it over and over and over and over again. Read the scriptures. Don't just take once and read it like and wait a year till you read it again. Read it over and over until it becomes a part of you. 
let God talk to you through his word. There's no other word anywhere that means as much as taking what God has done for you. What God can tell you in the scriptures. You may be find, find sometimes that you look and you say, oh, I've never read this before, but boy, does it have meaning. Have you ever done that? It was for your time in the right place to, to know it. Now, there's another one I have. It's over here that's called the uh, In Remembrance of Me. And the first thing I saw here, you can guess, is the big old face. And then I saw the hand with bread in it. And I thought it was kind of odd. That's a that big, large face in this. I'm not really sure what it's going to look like. So then I went, and the next thing I saw, I didn't see anything else. Now, it's funny. You think I would be able to see all these things, but I don't. I just see one thing at a time, maybe two. And I looked, and right above the hand here, I saw, as plain as anything, this low donkey head. Well, thought of this as being in remembrance of me. And you know, God said when, he was, when Jesus was taking the bread, he said, do this, take this bread, and do this in remembrance of me. So I knew that part was here, but why, was I, why do I have a donkey in there? Well, I started looking, and I found 25 Bible verses in that particular picture. And one person's found another one, so I, but I keep it up to 25. You can find 25, 26, whatever. But it goes through the whole life of Christ and the things that he did in miracles and praying at the Garden of Gethsemane. Here we have the Lord's Supper up here in a small version, very small version, the Ascension. Here we have the birth of Christ. You look through and through. Here are the, Mary and Joseph with the donkey. Okay. We have, I have so many other things. Each one, it kept showing a little bit and a little bit more. And I thought, well, how in the world can I find any more? But there was one spot, and I, I kept saying, now, Lord, I have everything. I have all these verses, the life, the life of Christ, but there's something missing. The crucifixion's not there. Why? Well, I could not find it. I drew a picture of the crucifixion, what I thought it might be for my picture. I put me in it first, not doing what God told me to do, to let him let me see what I needed to do. And I got it, and I started seeing this area here, and so I erased what I had. I had a small drawing. But there is the head of Christ with the crown. And all I've done is pencil in what I saw. I added no paint to it. I just penciled it in. And the cross. And it takes up a large part of the picture. What means so much to me sometimes when I look at that, and I even get teary now. Twelve years of age, I was, um, went to a GA meeting. And a bunch of young girls, of course. And there was an artist that was on stage, and he was presenting his artwork and talking about Christ on the cross and talking about salvation, and I accepted Christ that night. I'll never forget it. Isn't that an exciting thing? And I never would have I ever known that someday I might do the same thing. You know, we never know what God has for us to do, whether it's to do something. Here I've taken a gift, and the Lord gave me the gift. I offered to give it up when I retired if he wanted me to do something else. But he told me he didn't want me to in three different ways. Saying he was a potter, and he, he really had made me the way he wanted me to. Each one of you have a gift, and don't forget that you can use it no matter what you do. In business, in music, it doesn't have to be art. It doesn't have to be anything like that. It can be anything that you do as long as you take and use what you do to glorify God. I don't do this. I figure God does it. I know he does because it's been so important to me. 
The very last one here that I have is uh, <laughs> kind of unusual. I won't step on it, I promise. <laughs> this one, you're talking about looking at one. I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. And the only thing I saw was a jellyfish right there. If you get a chance, you might look. There's a jellyfish down there. Jellyfish. Now, I'd like to know how in the world am I going to get a jellyfish or find one in the Bible. All right, well, you think, I thought it's funny, too. Okay. The next thing I saw was an elephant. Well, that doesn't go with a jellyfish. That's kind of unusual, too, isn't it? What in the world am I doing finding these sorts of things in a picture? So I set it aside. One day in reading in Romans, in Romans 1.20, I ran across this verse. From the time the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky and all that God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have not, they don't, they have no excuse whatsoever for not knowing God. I knew where the picture was going. So I started looking with this verse in mind. I started looking at it differently than I ever had before. And little by little, it came to me. There are more things from the sea, starfish, and uh, we, have, uh, we have fish, and we have dolphin. Here we have a butterfly, the insects. I have some land with a waterfall. We have a bear, a lion. Here I have forest, mountains, birds in the, in the, with the baby birds. Here a bird and a baby bird. This is a big yellow spot, but I saw apples. I see the hand of God holding a little bird, a big eagle, but in this eagle there's a lamb. I see people, giraffe, owls, all through you keep looking and seeing more and more and more. God's creation. I guess the name of the picture is creation. But remember that no one has an excuse not to know that there is someone that has more power and is more powerful than anything he made us. If we start looking at what, how we're made, it's unbelievable to think that there are so many little machines. And Dr. Charles Stanley said, you start looking under a microscope and it's like all these little machines looking and you see and there's more machines and more things and everything. And we're all different, all different. Every one of us. The Lord can use you in whatever way that you let him use you. If he's asked you to do something, don't turn away. Remember, if he asked you to do something, it's not your ability. It's God's ability to give to you what he wants you to do. If it's to preach, he'll tell you. He'll give you a, the words to say. If it's to sing, if it's to write notes to people. You know, I, I get tickled sometimes. I think of my aunt that was always cooking for people. And I bet that lady cooked more meals than anybody I know of. And she would take them to people that were in need or take it to people that uh, were sick that was her gift above everything. You know, God uses the little things sometimes that mean just as much. We don't know who we touch. We don't know who we, we see. I have one more thing and then I'll quit here. I'm about to talk too much. This Ephesians, I love Ephesians. I've got to read this. Paul's prayer of spiritual empowerment. When I think of the wisdom and scope of God's plan, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will give you mighty inner strength through the Holy Spirit. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts as you trust in him. 
May your roots go down deep in the soul of God's marvelous love. And may you have the power and understanding as God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love really is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is so great you'll never understand it, not fully. Then you'll be able, then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Oh, isn't that something? Just read that. You will be filled with the life and power that comes from God. Now glory be to God by his mighty work, or his mighty power at work within us. He is able to accomplish infinitely more than we can ever dare to ask or hope. May he be given glory in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever for endless ages. That is a prayer that you need to read daily. If you haven't read Ephesians, read it. Read it over and over and over again. Paul gets down deep into you. It's something that he's, he's letting you know how powerful God is and what God has done for you. What Jesus Christ has died on the cross and he died for your sins. We should be so excited about having such a Savior and being sure that we mention him to everyone we see. The Lord gave me this experience, and I pray that he will continue. It's an experience I can't explain, but I have come closer to the Lord because of reading his scripture over and over. And I've come closer to the Lord by asking him to say, Holy Spirit, teach me. I can't do things myself. Don't forget to ask that because the Lord wants to be close to you. He wants you to praise him, as David did. He wants you to pray and talk to him. He wants you to remember all of his word and read it. And he wants to, you to know that he is the almighty, glorious, wonderful God. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll just be with us today. Be with each one here. I pray, O oh Lord, a blessing upon them. Play a blessing upon this, this mighty, wonderful university. Pray, O oh Lord, that you will guide these, peop these students and the professors and let there be such power in their words and in the things that they do in their life. Let them never sell themselves short, for if they have Jesus Christ, there is nothing impossible. Go with them and bless them and protect them, O oh God, and protect their families. For this I will give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.